This video is made possible by Practical Defense Systems, the best online security training at the lowest prices. You can start your security career today online at pdsclasses.com. Check them out. Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support of Gun Guy TV. I'm very, very grateful for everything that you do. Before we get into the uh, test and review of the bullet safe vest, which I'm going to do in a second, I do want to make you aware of a few things. One is our Twitter account is gone. So if you want to follow us in a Twitter type format, you can do that on Gab. We have an account with Gab. I really like Gab a lot. And what I like about them among other things, is that they are cancel culture proof. So check out Gab. There is a link in the description. You'll also find us on MeWe. I have no idea how long Facebook is going to last. At some point or other, we'll probably get booted off of that as well. And if that happens, MeWe is a very Facebook-like social media platform. In fact, it's very much like Facebook, and it does a lot of really cool stuff, but it's also cancel culture proof. So we're not likely to get booted off of that, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, you might also check us out on Parlor when and if it comes back. I think it probably will, but uh, you know we'll wait and see. They're, they got quite the battle going on. I did like the platform, so check us out on these new platforms right here. If you get a chance, uh, you might also subscribe to the Gun Guy TV Firearms Podcast. You can do that on any of your favorite podcast players. One of the nice things about podcasts is because they're decentralized, they're pretty cancel culture and big tech destruction proof. Because even if uh, Spotify or iHeart or Google Podcasts or whatever decided not to carry the podcast. You'd be able to find it on a bazillion podcast players all over the place. So make sure you subscribe to that as well if you get a chance. We're going to be doing a lot more audio podcasts and interviews with folks and that kind of stuff coming up. And then lastly, and again, I apologize for all this stuff before I get started, uh, check us out on these platforms as well. Because as you know, YouTube is extremely sketchy. And in this current environment of cancel anybody that the left doesn't agree with, well, we could go away on YouTube too. And that's why we're also in all these other places, most notably BitChute, Rumble, GunStreamer, and so on. And I'm always adding new ones. So as I add new ones, I will let you know. But you certainly can go subscribe to Gun Guy TV at any of those places as well. All right, what I was going to talk about today is body armor. The average citizen probably doesn't care. But if you're a little bit of a prepper, or for that matter, if you work as a security guard, we train a lot of security guards throughout the state, about 20,000 actually, or you're, you're uh, checking ATMs and collecting money or something like that, you're concerned about body armor. Now, everybody in my household has body armor, and the main reason for that is we owned a security company, and I got in the habit of doing that, and so I've maintained the habit as sort of a prepper of sorts. I'm not terribly paranoid, but I do think it's, all, it's really a good idea, particularly during civil unrest or if you're trying to get out of town, during that and you're driving through it and you don't want to zig and set a zag and find yourself getting shot at in your car, it's probably a good idea to have some body armor with you. I doubt we'll ever, ever need it, to be honest with you, but I have it anyway. Well, this year when I went to upgrade everything or just kind of renew them because they're only good for about every five years is when the warranty uh, goes out, I bought vests from Bullet Safe because they were fairly inexpensive and frankly, we don't think they'll ever need them. Well, Tom at Bullet Safe sent me a vest to review. Now, it just so happens that since that time, Bullet Safe has been purchased and the company has transitioned to new ownership. So we'll have to see what happens with that. I don't know. But we did take a vest out and uh, go to the range and try to poke holes all the way through it, which I'm going to tell you, spoiler alert, I was not able to do. Now, I say that. Could I have shot the vest with something that would defeat it? Of course. But I don't feel that that's a fair test. I want to test the vest against the things it's rated to stop. So without the uh, hard plates, this one has plates in it front and back, but without that, it's a soft body armor vest. It's rated to stop up to 44 Magnum pistol. And so that's what we did with it. We didn't go beyond that. Now, I don't own a 44 Magnum, so we didn't shoot it with one. I decided to try something else. By the way, this is not the vest we shot full of holes. I'm going to show you that one later. This happens to be my vest, which is why it's got the plates in it. And they did not send me plates to review because they didn't have any at the time. There was a mad rush to buy armor, as there has been for other things. Anyway, we took it out to the range. We Let's see, we shot it with a 9 millimeter. We shot it with a 40. These are all self-defense rounds. 
We shot it with a 45, a 38 Special, and a 357 Magnum, and then I fired at it with a 9mm, but it was out of a carbine. So I tried double odd buck, and it stopped that admirably, as a matter of fact. And then I thought, well, I'll try it with a 7 8 ounce full power 12 gauge slug. Now, my bad. I did not really have the proper device to put it on, to put the armor on to hold it there that would have given it some backing. I just used my plate tester, which is designed to slide a plate down inside and hold the plate still. And as a result, there was no backing there to give any uh, resistance against the vest just collapsing into the hole. So when I shot it with the 12 gauge, with both the buckshot and the, uh, and the slug, it just kind of sucked it into the hole. And as a result, it tore the back of the uh, the vest up. The buckshot didn't, but the slug did. I don't think it would have done that had I put it up against some sort of a, um, a mannequin or something that actually gave it some back pressure. And I'll do that a little better the next time. In any case, I did take it apart um, about two or three weeks after I got done with that because we were super busy. And this is what I found. the 12 gauge 7 8 ounce slug and the wad <laughs> hey, wow man okay not the best uh, not the best audio because I don't have a mic on I'm just using the mic and the camera but that's still got uh, boy, it's got a bunch of layers left. I don't know how many, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight full layers of armor left uh, that none of this, none of these rounds penetrated. That's pretty stinking impressive, if you ask me. Uh, I'm going to tear apart the other side now. Okay, I got, I stopped being lazy and I put a mic on <laughs> for you. This is the back side, I think, right? I don't know. Anyway, this is the side that we shot with the uh, 12 gauge double lot buck. I already pulled out all the stuff, uh, the projectiles from the side that we shot with the handguns and with the um, with the shotgun 7 8 ounce slug. So now I'm going to work on this side. Let me get the tape cut here that's holding the, everything together. And we're going to peel this out and see what we can find in here. So far I'm, I'm truthfully very impressed. I don't have an overhead camera for you. I apologize, but I'll take some close-up shots as we find things. Look at that. That's even in the beginning. There's a piece of a jacket. Um, I don't know what that's from. It's been a few weeks since we shot this thing. I thought we just shot it with a shotgun uh, blast, but I don't know. That's interesting that that jacketing is there. Unless those are jacketed pellets that were in there. That could be, I guess. There's another one. So yeah, it's that, you know what that is? This is the pellets and they're just flattening out. That's got to be what it is. There's two of them. And uh, let's see how deep they went. They didn't go very deep, but looks of things. They didn't do any damage to the back of the vest. The other one, the, the slug, 
tore up the back of the vest, but it tore up the back of the vest because I didn't have it supported by anything. Had I had it on a some sort of a uh, mannequin or something or something that gave it some pressure on the back of the vest, it wouldn't have torn it up so badly. So that's my fault, not the vest's fault. But here they are. There's all the, the uh, pellets from the buckshot. And that was full, full uh, power double lot buck. I wasn't shooting any light loads or anything, light recoil loads. This is a, you know, regular old full boat, in your face, kaboom, hurts your shoulder, <laughs> however you want to describe it. It doesn't seem to bother me, but uh, that's just me, I guess. Uh, double lot buck. And it only went through, wow, that's it. It only went through three layers. One, two, three. When I got done with the test, I was very impressed with the performance of the bullet safe vest. It did everything it was designed to do. It stopped every round it was designed to stop. The only one we didn't try was the 44 mag because I don't own one and I don't have a buddy that has one. But we tried the shotgun and uh, that was fairly powerful hit. It stopped all of that. I was very, very impressed with that. The build quality on them is very good. The stitching is very good. They are bulky. And so if you're buying it as a concealment vest, it's gonna be probably too bulky for that, I would think. Unless you don't care if everybody knows you're wearing a vest. It is pretty bulky. It's not so bad if you are traveling, if you bought it for your family and you just wanna put a big garment over the top of it because you're gonna be driving out of a dangerous area, you're leaving the city to go to a, a more rural area during civil unrest. Yeah, you can cover that up. People aren't gonna notice sitting in your car or getting gas or whatever, they're probably not gonna notice that you are wearing the vest. I mean, I've tested it and found that that's the case. The other thing is that they aren't necessarily the most comfortable thing to wear all day. You'll notice, for example, in the back, I think for marketing purposes, you have this nice mesh where you can see it. When you look at it in the pictures, it's got the nice mesh here. But in the front, it's not breathable at all. There's no mesh. So they only put it on the one side, which I found kind of funny. I mean, it's a little bit uh, kind of cheesy there. But again, the price of the vest is such that you can't, you can't expect the kind of uh, bells and whistles you're going to get on a $900, $1,500 vest on something that is as inexpensive as they are. these are. What you're buying these for is to suit the purpose that they suit, which is a very inexpensive vest, which is going to admirably do the job you've bought it to do. Now, I haven't checked the the uh, rifle plates yet, but it, if I can get them to send them to me, I will do that. I can t attest to the fact that the soft body armor works extraordinarily well. It's up to standard, and I feel very protected wearing it. That said, I have had other vests. I've also had second chance vests and so on. If I compare them to other vests, I can tell you these perform as well as any vest I've ever owned when it comes to the point of, sta of stopping the round. They are not necessarily as light. They're not necessarily as, as thin. They're more bulky. So if you're concerned about bulk or you're concerned about a little bit of extra weight, then that's an issue. Uh, other than that, I found that it works really, really well. And they do have some options. They have a uniform carrier for the front if you're you know, a security guard or something and you want to wear it on the outside of your uniform and that we've just got your patches here. And it, the front of it looks like a uniform shirt. So that would make it more comfortable. I, anyway, I'm very impressed. Bullet Safe, they seem to make a very good product. And for the average person or a person on a, on a, you know, kind of a light budget, they're perfect. If you don't want to go spend $800 on a vest or $1,000 on a vest, why do it? Contact Bullet Safe and buy one of theirs. I, I have found it to be exactly what I needed for my family. It's not something we wear every day. It's something that we have in case of a dire emergency. And we probably will never use it, but if we ever do, I'll feel very comfortable about putting them on my family and feeling like they're going to do the job because I've tested them and they do. Well, there you go. There's the bullet safe, bulletproof vest. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you will continue to support Gun Guy TV. We're trying to get the channel to grow and it is. I'm very grateful for that. And uh, please do check us out on those other platforms I mentioned before. And wherever you go, whatever you do, stay safe.